tell somebody, I should have more money than what I got. How many of you in here, how many of you in here are givers? Now some of y'all stingy, so don't put your hand up. So I'm lying. How many of y'all in here really are givers? Where you at? Put your hand up. How many, how many tithers are in here? Well, he made you a promise. He said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sin. You ain't supposed to be struggling. Somebody called me today. Somebody called me today. He said, hey, brother. I said, how you doing? He said, I, I, I won't give you $10,000. I said, for what? They said, the Lord just told me to give it to you. See, see, I need you to get to a place that you tap into such a river and such a stream, right? Are you listening? You tap into such a stream that God start putting your name in on people's mind. And they just come up with ways to bless you. Are y'all ready? This is what you're gonna do. Just watch, watch, watch. You're gonna say, money coming to me now. Can you do that? Come on, let's practice. Real soft. You do it loud, angels are released. You're gonna do it soft, practice. Hold your hand out. You ready? I heard somebody say, Man, I ain't got time to be practicing. <laughs> Real soft, come on. Money, come to me. Now. All right. Not money, come. Money, come, man. Come, man. ETH, a continual flow. You ready? You ready? Right before I preach on what I'm going to preach on, I, I, I think I might teach again tonight and preach tomorrow. But are you ready for this? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Money! Coming to me! Shout about it! Sit down. Get your Bibles very quickly. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I can't hear you. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say it again. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. All right. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And I, I want you to hear me. And maybe I'll get a chance to preach in a minute. But I really, really, really want you to hear this. Because certain blessings begin to be released in my life and certain miracles even financially begin to happen in my life when I begin to work these principles or pray these prayers or say these things or when I became aware somebody shout aware, aware. alright we know that the Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 that my people are destroyed for what lack of what okay so the job of the enemy is to keep you ignorant. If he can keep you not knowing nothing, he has an advantage. So 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, says something very profound to me. It's one of, the, one of the most powerful scriptures in the Bible that I've ever read. It says something very profound to me. And I want you to say this. I, I, mean, I really, really, really want you to hear what I'm about to say to you. He said, lest Satan should gain an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. You must understand that in the hour that we're living in, the job of the enemy is to keep you at a place to forever come to church, to forever shout, to forever scream, to forever turn around three times, to forever go through the motions and never obtain victory. The truth of the matter is most of us who come to church and sit in the house of God, who come in here and dance and shout and scream, most of us, if you were to really ever communicate or talk to us, most of us are not really happy. Most of us are not really satisfied 
satisfied. Most of us are not really content with what God is doing in our life. We know that on the inside of us there is a greater dimension. There is a greater level that there's more to God than just coming to church and going through the motions. I became extremely disappointed and extremely mad when I saw people in the body of Christ who love God with every fiber of their being, love God with everything that is in them. I'm talking about prayer warriors. I'm talking about prophetess, apostles, men of God who genuinely love God, yet one thing that they seem not to be able to have the victory over is the opposition and the powers of hell. You must understand that the devil that we are dealing with, he is not a weak devil. He is not a dumb devil. The devil is smart. He is conniving. He is so smart that the Bible declares, be wise as a serpent and be harmless as a dove. That's how smart the enemy is. He's conniving. He's tricking. He knows your weakness. He knows what will get to you. He knows how to get to you. He knows who you like, who you don't like. He knows how to agitate you, how to get on your nerve. Am I talking right? The enemy knows your weaknesses and he knows your strengths. But there are many people who are sitting in the very house of God who are going through the motions yet you have no victory in your life. There's sickness in your body. There's pain all through your body. There's fail with your children. There's calamity in your finances. You seem not to be able to get the victory. And Paul said that the way that the enemy gets an advantage of you is when you are ignorant of his devices. You must first understand that you cannot fight the devil with a BB gun. You cannot fight him with an AK-47. You cannot fight him with a pistol, a 9mm or a shotgun. But you must understand that the weapons of our warfare they are not carnal but they are mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every half thing that exalts itself against the very knowledge of God your battle is in the spirit realm and you are trying to fight things in the natural that can only be dealt with in the spirit you must get to a place where you're able to look at a person who is you at your job and say baby I'm not going to fight you because you are not my battle. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood but principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. I feel an anointing coming on me. You must understand that this battle that you are fighting is a spiritual battle and if you're going to defeat the devil if you're going to get victory over him you must stop hanging out with a bunch of carnal people and people who have no power and people who can't cast the devil out of nobody. I don't have time to be hanging with people that just want to gossip and backbite and keep up a whole bunch of mess. I want to get around some people that know how to pray until the fire comes, that know how to pray until demons are cast out. Slap somebody next to you and say, I need some prayer warriors. I need some prayer warriors. You got the wrong neighbor. I said shake somebody next to you and say I need some prayer warriors. I don't need no haters. I don't need just a whole bunch of friends. But I need somebody that know how to pull on God. I need somebody that know how to hold on to the horns of the altar. I need somebody that know how to say pass me not. Oh gentle savior. I need somebody that knows how to say it ain't the preacher. It ain't the deacon. But it's me oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I need somebody that knows how to make God turn around and come see about me. I don't want nobody in my circle that just want to gossip and keep up a bunch of mess, but I want somebody that when I get sick can lay hands on me and get the devil off of me. I need somebody that can get the devil off of my children. I need somebody in here that knows how to touch heaven, to jump on your feet and show glory. The way the enemy gets an advantage over you is when you are ignorant 
of his devices when you do not know how he operates most of you will never catch the enemy because you expect the devil to show up with horns on his head you expect him to have a pitchfork you expect him to look like the devil but the Bible says marvel not for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light so you must understand that the devil is not going to show up looking like the devil but he's going to show up with a collar around his neck he's going to show up with a cross around his neck the devil might even have on a suit y'all ain't talking back to me in here you got to know how to identify the devil and the devil will use whoever he got to use he'll use your mama he'll use your daddy he'll use your sister come on talk to me he'll use your brother he'll use your husband he'll use your wife because the enemy knows how to get your attention he always comes in a way that you don't recognize that's why whenever I see somebody and I recognize that the devil is using them I don't get mad at them I said excuse me one minute I look at them and I say listen I'm not talking to you but let me talk to that demon spirit that's using you that think it's going to have the victory over my life but I want the devil to know tonight that no weapon y'all should read your Bible that is formed against me shall be able to prosper I'm reminded of Jesus he's having a walk with the disciples he looks at the disciples and he says I have to die when he says I have to die Peter talks up and Peter says be it far from you Jesus looks at Peter and recognizes that ain't Peter talking that's a spirit using Peter he looked at Peter dead in his face and said get thee behind me Satan sometimes you got to look at that child in your house and say get thee behind me Satan sometimes you got to look at your co-worker and say get thee behind me Satan sometimes you got to look at the person who's making you mad sitting on your pew tonight you got to look at them and say get thee behind me Satan don't let nobody take your joy don't let nobody take your peace as for me and my house we will so the enemy knows that most of us don't know how he operates would y'all talk back to me he knows that most of us don't know how he does things that you got all kind of witches y'all quiet you got you got blind what is a blind witch? That's a witch. That is a witch by bloodline. That sometimes somebody in their bloodline was a witch and it was never dealt with. So because it was never dealt with in the bloodline, you are a witch by bloodline. Quiet in here. Some of you, the enemy can even dedicate you to be a witch in your sleep. That's why be careful of those spirits that like to come in your bedroom and hold you down. Uh oh, uh oh, who am I talking to in here? Maybe y'all never been through that, but I've been through that before. That spirit that'll come in your bedroom usually between two and four in the morning that'll hold you down in the bed and put its hand over your mouth to keep you from saying, but if you could ever get out the name Jesus. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It's called a, it's called a nightmare spirit. Some folk call it the Hanks, but it's a nightmare spirit. It's a spirit that a lot of times when you see babies who die, we call it cradle death. But sometimes a spirit went and took that child's breath in his sleep. 
Y'all quiet in here. Nightmare spirit. Don't let that spirit keep coming. Some of you would keep on coming, and after a while, if you let it keep coming, it'll get comfortable. Don't let no, don't let no, no, don't, don't, don't let nobody dead. Some of your mama came and visited you. Your mama ain't got no business visiting you. My daddy came and gave you a message. The devil is like, you better tell your daddy, go back where he came from. Because that's a familiar spirit. Are y'all listening to me? You have blind witches, but then you have a functional witch. And a functional witch is the witch who does the voodoo stuff, the black magic, who does the witchcraft. Who, uh, uh, you, you understand? That's a functional witch. And those kind of witches come to church. Some of y'all sitting next to a witch. Y'all quiet in here. Oh, don't think because they shouting they're not a witch. Don't think because they run through the church don't mean they're not a witch. Am I getting on y'all nerve yet? I'm going to show you something and I'm going somewhere. You have a blind witch. You got a functional witch. But then you have a charismatic witch. What is a charismatic witch? Those are the witches that come to church. Those are the witches that operate in the church. Those are the witches who hold mics. Those are the witches who hide behind the prophetic. See, some of y'all so gullible and so hungry for a prophecy that you will take a word from a witch. And you just let anybody speak in your life. I don't let everybody speak in my life. See, witchcraft is a work of the flesh. So charismatic witchcraft is if I'm up here prophesying under the anointing. Let's say I'm up here prophesying under the anointing. The Spirit of the Lord come upon me to prophesy, and it's him. Well, when the anointing lifts, I'm supposed to shut up. But if I keep flowing when the anointing lifts, I've tapped into witchcraft. Because there's a thin line between the anointing and divination. Y'all quiet in here. How many people know that witches can prophesy and be accurate? Am I right about it? So one thing you have to make your prayer is I blind the third eye. What is the third eye? That's the eye that witches look through. I'm messing y'all up tonight, ain't y'all? I'm trying to help you so you can know what you're fighting. The third eye. That eye was opened in the book of Genesis. Then your eyes shall be opened. You shall know good and evil. Be careful of any prophetic voice who knows everything. Whenever you know too much, that's witchcraft. Because God don't give nobody everything. The Bible says we know in part and we prophesy in part. Even Elijah, y'all quiet in here. Even Elijah when, when, the, when the woman was concerned about her child, the, Elijah said, the Lord has hid this thing from me. There are some things that even God hides. Y'all quiet in here. There's some things he just ain't going to show you. Because if he show you everything, you won't need God. Raise your right hand and say in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something. If you keep on sounding like Presbyterians, I'm going to hit you with this mic. Try it again. Come on. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every, functional every functional witch. Every blind witch. Every charismatic witch. In my life. In my circle. In the name of Jesus. I command them to be removed from my life. Tonight, Tonight. Now. now, in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Can I go farther? Yeah. I said, can I go farther? Yeah. Uh, 
let me help you. You have white magic. What is white magic? They call that good magic. All of it's going to send you to hell. You know, white magic, that's when somebody do magic to wish you good. But it's witchcraft. And it's ungodly. You have white magic, but then you have black magic. That's when somebody does magic on you to do you harm. Tell somebody, it won't work in my life. Okay. You have potion magic. What is potion magic? That's magic through oils. Be careful when people are always trying to give you oils and lotion to put on. Y'all quiet. Nobody shout no more. Some of y'all sitting there thinking, mm mm, she sure is always trying to give me oil. I wonder if she a witch. <laughs> nothing wrong with oil, nothing wrong with lotion, nothing wrong with, but be careful when somebody is always over trying to give it to you. Potion magic. Candle magic. People like to burn candles all the time. They'll get a candle and burn it on you. They'll do that. You have contagious magic. What is contagious magic? That's when somebody work a spell on you, but by me being connected to you, it comes on me. Some of y'all had money till you connected with certain people. Oh, I'm preaching good. Some of y'all was doing all right till you started hanging with certain folk. Till you got a, your marriage was doing fine till you got around them. Y'all quiet in here. You was doing good. You don't understand that you have been victimized by contagious magic. I'm trying to show you something because when you don't know how the enemy operates, he has what? An advantage. I'm almost done because I see I'm getting on your nerve. Somebody say black magic, white magic, candle magic, potion magic, contagious magic. There's another magic called sympathetic magic. What is sympathetic magic? That's when somebody control you with their emotions. That happens a lot in long distance relationships. Or it happens a lot when a parent try to make a child feel bad when they don't do something for them. That's witchcraft. I knew y'all were going to stop shouting. When you're trying to make people do stuff for you out of guilt. That's witchcraft. Quiet in here. Some of y'all witches that don't even know it. Praise God. <laughs> Necromancy. Talking to the dead. We don't talk to the dead. We don't communicate to the dead. Bibliomancy. That's when people do witchcraft using the Bible. quiet in here, ain't it? When people tell you to take a scripture, put it in your shoe, and walk around with the scriptures in your shoe. Witchcraft. Why nobody shout no more? What's going on? Are you listening? Huh? You learning? You learning? I like how y'all in the Bahamian, learning, yeah. learning. Look at somebody and say, I'm learning. learning. I, had a, I had a woman, I had a woman who was following me all over the country. I mean, everywhere in America. Everywhere I went in America, she was there. 
I seen her so, and she would always have about four or five bags with her. And I gave her a name, her name was Suitcase. And, uh, and I said, there goes Suitcase, she made it. Look at Suitcase, y'all, she made it. On, on your side, everywhere I went, I don't care if it, you know America's a big country. But everywhere I would go, from the West Coast to the East Coast, everywhere, she was there. She would come to every church service. But she would come everywhere, everywhere. She would go on my website, look at my itinerary. She wouldn't fly there. She wouldn't drive there. She would catch a bus. Everywhere. Everywhere. And I told her one time, I say, you know, you need to stop that. That ain't normal, you know. <laughs> she said, well, I'm following the glory. I said, well, the glory at your church. You ain't got to follow me everywhere, you know. But uh, she said, no, if I don't got it like you, Prophet Khan, I'm doing, oh, praise the Lord. Okay. She kept coming and coming. So a woman of God was with me. I talked about her last night, Kim Daines, and I told her she majored in spiritual warfare. I said, I say, Kim, she was in Sacramento. I said, hey, that woman right there, she followed me everywhere I go. So I'm home. Now I'm going to tell you something. Not only did she follow me everywhere, but every month, she would bring me her tithe every month. She would bring me her tithe, and she always, you know, if my dad or somebody would call my staff, would try to take it for me because she couldn't get to me. She would never let them give it to me. She always say, I have to put it in his hand. Okay? Okay? Now, that's the spirit of Azazel. And Azazel is the spirit a transferring of spirit. Okay. She said, I got to put it in his hand. Okay. Well, I said, Kim, Kim, that woman, she just followed me everywhere. What's wrong with her? And Kim said, that's a witch. I said, no, not suitcase. Suitcase ain't no witch. <laughs> <laughs> no, suitcase ain't no witch. Right? So, come here, Pastor Peterson. So, we were sitting in the car. Hold my mic. Turn my mic. We were sitting in the car, and while we were sitting in the car, she say, be still. Don't go nowhere. Sit right here. And she started praying in tongue, and she said, I wash you. This is Kim praying. I wash you. And I'm saying, well, do she look dirty or something? What you washing her for? She said, I wash you. I wash you. She said, I cut off your legs in the spirit and I hinder you from traveling. She prayed that for about 10, 15 minutes. Next thing I know, I look up, I don't see suitcase no more. I start feeling sorry for suitcase. Now watch this. I want to show you something. When suitcase, I don't even know her name. Ain't that a shame? But when this woman was following me all over the country, you got to hear this, there was a stronghold that seemed to be on the finances of the ministry. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, she cursed your money by giving you money. Oh, I hope y'all hear what I'm saying in here. So that's why you don't take gifts from everybody. Am I helping anybody? Raise your right hand. Say in the name of Jesus. I told you, now listen, you have what you say, and you got to know how to speak with authority. The kingdom of God suffered violent, and the violent do what? They do what? All right, so when I tell you to say it, you got to say it, and you got to understand that when you pray these prayers, Things are going to be broken off of your life. Raise your right hand. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All black magic. All black magic. All white magic. All, white magic. All, contagious, magic. All contagious magic. All potion magic. All, potion magic. All, candle, magic. All candle magic. Operating in my life. Operating in, my life. Operating in the life of my children. In the name of Jesus. I destroy it. I cancel it. I dismantle it by fire now 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 
Shout like it's broken right now. Come on, shout. Can I go a little farther? I was in Tennessee and I received a phone call from a woman who got healed in one of my services of HIV and AIDS. Completely healed. Documented healed. I got a phone call while I was in Memphis and said, Sister Buchanan, the lady you know, right now, I said, what? They say her body, from her head to about her knees, is completely covered in dead skin. But it ain't like she had a little bit. It was so much that she literally looked frozen. Okay. So this is why I tell you, you need a prophet in your life. Because there are certain secrets, Amos 3 and 7, that he only reveals to the prophet. Slap your neighbor, say, I need a prophet in my life. Take your neighbor, you need a prophet in your life. I don't care how I, I, I don't I don't care how much God talks to you, how much he uses you, care how known as you are. I mean, God speaks to me, but there is a prophet who God has even assigned to my life. And God talks to me, listen, I know God's voice like I know my name, but there are prophets, a uh, prophet that God has assigned to my life. Everybody needs a prophet, whoever it is. And, and, and make sure it's a prophet who has a legitimate, I mean, I mean, is, is really hearing what the Lord is saying. Because whenever you give somebody that much confidence, if they have the wrong spirit, they can take advantage of you. Am I right about it? You ain't gonna bamboozle me. So, this woman's body was completely covered in dead skin. I'm done. Completely covered in dead skin. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, son, go. He asked me, I prayed about it. And the Lord said, he said, son, that's, that's potion magic. I said, okay. I say, well, how am I going to break it? He said, that's a spirit of revenge and backlash coming after her. I said, why is it coming after her? He said, remember, she got healed of AIDS, but there's a spirit that wants to come back and make her sick from something else and cause her to die so that people will say she never got healed of AIDS. So he said it was a spirit of revenge that came to take away her testimony. He said, but I want you to bind the hook and the latch. I say, well, you know, we have screen doors. I'm sure y'all got screen doors here. And the screen door would have a latch on it, and the other side would have a hook. He said, there's a spirit in her bloodline that causes sickness to keep on hooking on to her blood. He said, but I want you to bind witchcraft. He wants you, I want you to bind the hook and the latch. And I bind the hook and the latch, and God completely gave her a miracle. I want to I share with you three more things, and then I'm done. I'm going to get out your way because I see y'all get mad and tired, okay? Okay, now catch this. Somebody shout, eavesdropper. Now, catch this. God is omnipresent, is that right? But the devil is not. So because the devil is not omnipresent, he has to assign demons to certain objects to obtain information. So some people will buy you an item, assign a demon to that item for you to take in your house, and you wonder how they know certain information, but it's because they assigned a spirit to what they gave you. Am I messing with y'all? Somebody say eavesdropper. So an eavesdropper spirit is a spiritual tape recorder. Every time you get a prophetic word, you need to bind the eavesdropper. Why? Because the eavesdropper wants to hear what the word of the Lord is so they can sabotage it. 
Somebody shout, watcher. watcher. I can hear you. Shout, watcher. watcher. Not switcher. Say, watcher. watcher. I had me some switcher today. It's good, too. Glory to God. Sit down. All right. Get your Bibles very quickly. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I can't hear you. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say it again. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. All right. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And I, I want you to hear me. And maybe I'll get a chance to preach in a minute. But I really, really, really want you to hear this. Because certain blessings begin to be released in my life and certain miracles, even financially, begin to happen in my life when I begin to work these principles or pray these prayers or say these things or when I became aware. Somebody shout aware. aware. All right, we know that the Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 that my people are destroyed for what? Lack of what? Okay, so the job of the enemy is to keep you ignorant. If he can keep you not knowing nothing, he has an advantage. So 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 says something very profound to me. It's one of the, one of the most powerful scriptures in the Bible that I've ever read. It says something very profound to me. And I want you to say this. I, I, mean, I really, really, really want you to hear what I'm about to say to you. He said, let Satan should gain an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. You must understand that in the hour that we're living in, the job of the enemy is to keep you at a place to forever come to church, to forever shout, to forever scream, to forever turn around three times, to forever go through the motions and never obtain victory. The truth of the matter is most of us who come to church and sit in the house of God, who come in here and dance and shout and scream, most of us, if you were to really ever communicate or talk to us, most of us are not really happy. Most of us are not really satisfied. Most of us are not really content with what God is doing in our life. We know that on the inside of us there is a greater dimension there is a greater level that there's more to God than just coming to church and going through the motions. I became extremely disappointed and extremely mad when I saw people in the body of Christ who love God with every fiber of their being, love God with everything that is in them. I'm talking about prayer warriors. I'm talking about prophetess, apostles, men of God who genuinely love God, yet one thing that they seem not to be able to have the victory over is the opposition and the powers of hell. You must understand that the devil that we are dealing with, he is not a weak devil. He is not a dumb devil. The devil is smart. He is conniving. He is so smart that the Bible declares, be wise as a serpent and be harmless as a dove. That's how smart the enemy is. He's conniving. He's tricking. He knows your weakness. He knows knows what will get to you. He knows how to get to you. He knows who you like, who you don't like. He knows how to agitate you, how to get over. Tell somebody, I should have more money than what I got. How many of you in here, how many of you in here are givers? Now some of y'all stingy, so don't put your hand up. Stop lying. How many of y'all in here really are givers? Where you at? Put your hand up. How many, how many tithers are in here? Well, he made you a promise. He said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sin. You ain't supposed to be struggling. Somebody called me today. Somebody called me today. He said, hey, brother. I said, how you? I, I, I won't give you $10,000. I said, for what? They said, the Lord just told me to give it to you. 
See, see, I need you to get to a place that you tap into such a river and such a stream, right? Are you listening? You tap into such a stream that God start putting your name in on people's mind. And they just come up with ways to bless you. Are y'all ready? This is what you're going to do. Just watch me. Watch me. Watch. You're going to say, money come to me now. Can you do that? Come on, let's practice. Real soft. And when you do it loud, angels are released. We're going to do it soft. Practice. Hold your hand out. You ready? I heard somebody say, man, I ain't got time to be practicing. <laughs> Real soft, come on. Money, come to me. Now. All right. Not money, come. Money, come man. Come man. ETH, a continual flow. You ready? You ready? Right before I preach on what I'm going to preach on, I, I, I think I might teach again tonight and preach tomorrow. But are you ready for this? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Money! Coming to me! Shout about it! 